have to be sure to, to cleanse myself properly when I leave this place, but as I heard, there's a lot of people sick, <laughs> but uh, it's good to be here. Um, I've, I uh, always enjoy coming here, and I uh, just wished uh, I could have brought my family this time so you could see all my crazy kids. And my, my, I was talking with my wife, and she's like, she told me, she's like, these kids are trying to kill me over here, and I'm just like, okay, what happened? <laughs> so my wife fell asleep for nap time, and our two oldest got into these little little oranges, and it was, it was a, just got the bag, so there was, and they were half gone when she woke up. <laughs> so, and then the repercussions of that, uh, they, my kids learned early the next morning, um, and getting too much orange so I won't go into what that happened happened there, but but yes, it was uh, <laughs> yeah, it's been a rough time for my wife and us. Uh, we have a, a, a two year old that has her molars coming in this last week, and um, but uh, God's been good uh, this whole trip, and uh, we've seen God bless, and uh, I hope uh, I could be a blessing here tonight to you folks as well. So if you could take uh, your Bibles <clears throat> and turn to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. I just, uh, and then uh, if you wanted to see the slideshow up close or anything like that and had other questions, just get with me afterwards and I can show you the slideshow in person if you want. Uh, and uh, I can show you anything. I got uh, more pictures as well uh, of crazy stuff that I've seen over there, and I've seen people hold on to cars going down the road on, uh, on roller skates and uh, roller blades and anywhere to get a free ride, and <laughs> I've seen people uh, right on top of the cars there, and the car is going about 50 miles an hour, and uh, I don't know what that was all about, but I see all kinds of of uh, interesting stuff there. But uh, Acts chapter 16, and uh, in verse 6 through 10. Actually, we'll go back up to verse 4 here. And as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep that were ordained of the apostles and the elders which were at Jerusalem. And so were the churches established in the faith, increased in number daily. Now, when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, after they were come to Myasia, they essayed to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. And they, passing by Myasia, came down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night there. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Have you ever had to wait for something in your life? Anybody? Or is it just me? All right. Everybody here. And sometimes that is the hardest thing to do in the Christian life. And sometimes it's even harder on the mission field. Because you, you want to see results. You want to see the hand of God move on people. You want to see those results. But as we see here with Paul, they, the churches were established in the faith, and they increased in number daily. But in verse 6, they were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. God told them no here. They were forbidden. This is the only place in the scriptures where we find this happening, where they were forbidden. That's, that's kind of like, you know, the Packers kneeing the whole game through, right? And then at the end, throwing a bomb to win, right? Actually, to lose. I'm a Vikings fan, so. 
but it doesn't make any sense. Why would God, even though they've had success here, tell them, stop? Because that word forbidden here, that's a verb. And verbs, that's an action word. It's an, something actively stopping them here from going to Asia. We don't know what that is. We probably will in heaven. But there is something actively stopping them where the Holy Ghost was telling them, stop. Stop. Now, as a missionary, I am just like any other person here. I get impatient sometimes. But Paul, and the most troubling thing for Christians sometimes, isn't failure sometimes, it's success. Success sometimes is the biggest killer for Christians. Because you can see in uh, verse 4 and 5 here, where they established churches, not one, but many. And those churches were increasing in number daily. Daily. They were having success. But yet Paul was so humble enough to know who gave him that success here. And as missionaries, I have to look at this and continually ask myself, is the Holy Spirit trying to stop something? Is he trying to direct me in another way? But we, before we go get more into the message, let's uh, open up the message here with the word of prayer here tonight. Dear Lord, I want to thank you, Lord, for, for your word. And uh, I pray, Lord, now we can just apply the truths, Lord, that you've given to me to give to these people here tonight, Lord. And uh, waiting sometimes, it's... It's a dirty word for us sometimes, Lord, because uh, we want to do things for you. We can be zealous for you, but we also have to learn to wait for your timing, Lord, in, in all things. And, Lord, you do have your timing. And I pray, Lord, now that we can just see you through, through this waiting time. And I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. There was a, a fighter pilot. He was testing uh, the cannons on a plane um, just off... Long Island, New York. It's, uh, oh, I think it was uh, 1951 is when this happened. It was a real event. But the, the, the pilot, he fired his cannons at 20,000 feet, and he fired it all the way going down to 10,000 feet until, uh, until the cannon ran out. Well, his speed of his plane and the speed of the bullets he eventually caught up to the bullets that he fired from his plane. And he ended up shooting his own plane down. Now, you think this was a, a one-off chance, but it happened four more times in U.S. Air Force history where planes shot themselves down with their own cannons. They got ahead of what they were trying to do. And so many times as Christians, we can do the same. We can get ahead of God. And we see instances of that in the Bible. But God works through those. But waiting on God. It's something, as a missionary, again, don't, don't like to say that we have to do. We, we like to put in our prayer letters, oh, look at what God did this week. This month, God's blessing over here. Well, there are times, much like I mentioned, we were kicked out of a building where we were meeting with our, with our main group of people. And God had a plan there. And I'm going to dive, dive into that story a little bit more here. But Paul was forbidden of the Holy Ghost. And then if you go down to verse 7, it says, The Spirit suffered them not at the very end. So it was very clear here that they were not to preach the word in Asia. Now at this time, looking back in history, Rome wasn't in full control of Asia at this time. The 
there was actually a war going on in that part of the world, roughly during this time frame. So maybe that was the reason why. Maybe it was other reasons. We don't know. But God still had a plan. Much like how he had a plan for when his son, Jesus, would come. That was the perfect time for him to come. I can't help but think of the, the man in Luke 2, in verse uh, 25. You don't have to turn there, but... And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. This man had waited his whole life to see this. Now, when we got kicked out of the building there, we didn't do anything wrong. The landlord just came in and told, with the police and kicked us out. Kicked us out. We were meeting there for free, so I couldn't complain. And I was there for roughly three months when this happened. The, our missions pastor from our church had just gone back two months earlier. And we had a bunch of men that we were trying to train. So they were very discouraged. They were very scared. They were new Christians. Well, God had a plan. And it was a wonderful plan. Much like how God had a plan with Paul here. We call this the Macedonian call here today. I can't claim to have a vision <laughs> like Paul here. But we met on the beach for seven weeks. It was a beautiful view of the Atlantic Ocean. How many would like to have a, uh, to be at the beach right now having <laughs> church service? <huh? laughs> but on that seventh week, there was a lady that came walking on the beach. And we had many other people we actually reached at this spot by having the service there. Uh, the security guard from the, from the Catholic Church that was just a couple hundred yards away actually brought a bench from the Catholic Church so we could sit on it at our service. But we made other contacts at this spot. But this particular lady, she was distraught with life. Her husband had died 10 years earlier. And then her oldest son, six years. And she was shunned in the community. If somebody dies in your family, that means God's against you there. She was shunned. But she sat and our service on a Sunday morning. And after the service, she came up to one of the, one of the guys, the librarian, and she was like, I want this church in my house. And there you have to be kind of skeptical of what kind of house it is. Because not everybody has a nice house. Most, again, live in an 8 by 12 uh, shed with tin on it. But she had the nicest home, I think, in the community. And it was actually right in the center of that community. Her home opened up, and we can fit 50 to 60 people in there. It was a uh, hundred times better from where we were meeting before. But the best part of it was she was hungry. For the word of God. Not just her, but her family. She would get saved a couple months later. Or she would trust Christ. Then her oldest boy would get saved a couple months later. Then her oldest living daughter. And then her other daughter. And 
the picture of the three siblings together, all getting baptized. Now, I could have easily went and rented a place for $250, $250 a month, and we could have had our own place. I could have done my own thing. But God was telling me, stop. You're not the one in control here. And so I had to encourage the guys that, that had stayed. But he was also testing those men. And in, and in waiting on God sometimes, we see the biggest blessings. We see the biggest blessings. And as we continue reading in verse 11. Therefore, losing from Troas, we came, we, came from, uh, we came with a straight course to Simon Thracia, and the next day to Neapolis, and from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia, and a colony. And we were in that city abiding certain days. And on the Sabbath day, we went out of that city by a riverside where prayer was wanton to be made. And we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted thither. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshipped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, and she attended unto the things which were spoken of by Paul. And when she was baptized and her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. I had read this passage the week before we got kicked out in the Bible. And when we got kicked out, I was just like, well, maybe the Lord is shutting the door on us here in this community. Well, he was just opening up the door wider for us there. And one of her sons is one of the key men that we're working with. But I also want you to notice here, uh, at the end of verse 12, and we were in that city abiding certain days. It doesn't say how long or how many days. See, and sometimes in the Bible, it can kind of trick us into thinking, oh, all this happened right away, when in reality, it could have been weeks. But that lady now, she does all the decorating in her house. She does all the cleaning. Her family is such a blessing to be around. The word of God has changed that family so much. It is beyond my wildest dreams. Her oldest son leads the family in Bible time every morning and evening. They are such a blessing. But you know, the blessing, they don't keep it to themselves. And you know why her son got saved? Because he saw the change in his mother's life. The neighbors have seen it. They're coming. The neighbors that she used to have so much strife with are now attending the Bible classes. Not just church service, the Bible classes that we hold there. And she's no longer shunned in the community. She, she couldn't have asked for all this. And her wildest dreams of walking on a beach, looking for... What is life all about? I can't help, but if I did this in my own power, the joy that they have, it's so amazing. And 
the best part about it is I'm just along for the ride. And this is just one example of how God has worked there. Just one little example about this family. But we see it here. And we can even go to uh, John chapter 4, where Jesus meets the, the woman at the well. And after dealing with the woman at the well, she doesn't keep her to herself. She goes into the city and she tells the men, come see the Messiah. He told me everything that I've ever done. Is this not the Messiah? And the men go out into the city, many believing on her word. But when they met Jesus, many more believed because they heard it for themselves. Now, the men that we were working with there, guess what? Your faith in trials only increases or decreases. There's no in-betweens. You see plants and trees. It's not natural not to grow. Now, the men that stayed, who weren't looked they're no longer looking at the missionary through this trial. They're blessing God. Now, this lady also gave a portion of land to the church to build their own church building. The church has raised the funds to start. And when we get back, they're going to start it if they haven't started it already. They're excited to see what God is going to do for them. They've seen an innumerable amount of money come in for the church that they did themselves. I gave no money to it. I told them, I'm not giving you any money, but I will help you build it. They've seen over $500 come in in a year when some of them make a dollar a day. They are seeing the blessings of God when we wait. And waiting sometimes can be hard. The Lord first called me when I was 16 years old at Camp Chetek. I didn't get my marching orders to go out on my own till 34. That's 18 years. But that doesn't mean I didn't do anything in that time frame. I went to Bible college. I graduated. I was a bus captain. I, was a, I led missions trips. I've gone on missions trips. I did whatever I could, and whatever door opened, God, God opened for me. I went through it with the best of my abilities. And we can see that with Paul and his men here. In verse 10, and after he had seen the vision in Acts 16 and verse 10, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. See, that assuredly gathering. One person got the vision, but he didn't keep it to himself. He brought others with him. And they trusted him with their life. Assuredly gathering. That means they were, in, in the Greek, that means they were, they were knit together. Much like how your clothes are knit together today. It's not just one strand in your clothes. And we have, you know, bed sheets as well. And I had to go shopping for bed sheets the other day. So there, you have all these different threads, you know, how many, like, I think it's per inch. 
250 count, 500 count, you know, 800 count, and I was just like, what in the world? Just give me bed sheets. <laughs> but they're all stitched together, and they're strong when they're stitched together. Now, add God to that. That makes it even stronger. Assuredly gathering, for they had called us to preach the gospel unto them. Now, that's, I'm 100% sure the Lord wants us in Liberia. He has assuredly gathered us together to go to Liberia. But it's not just Liberia. It's not just Liberia. I preached on taking the gospel to the whole world this morning, the Great Commission. This might be just one part, but if I'm faithful in a small part, because I, I prayed for years, Lord, just give me a small part of this world to reach. Just give me a small part. Give me one person this week to reach for you, Lord. Give me one person to reach this year. And that's my prayer every day. Every day. Where, whoever it is, wherever it may be, I'm to be an ambassador for him. It's not that I deserve it. <laughs> I don't deserve this at all. I am just a, a country boy raised in northern Minnesota that likes hunting and fishing. I went to carpentry school to try and build my house on a lake. <clears throat> I got the exact spot still picked out. There's still no house there. So, But I had my own goals my own desires. But when I compared it to God's, God was just like, no. No. If I had followed mine, I would be so miserable today. And as we see here, Paul, this wasn't the end of the people that would be saved there. There's the Philippian jailer. But guess what? Taking the gospel, it has a cost associated to it. Guess what? Paul was beaten. But it had a cost. At the same time that this was going on, that we were meeting for six weeks, our, our youngest at the time, Mackenzie, had an accident. Uh, she had fractured her skull. Um, in Africa, in Liberia, you don't want to have that type of uh, uh, accident or injury. She had a fall. And we didn't think anything of it. She was fine. She stopped crying right away. But the next day, she had a swelling the size of a baseball on the side of her head. And, you know, we had to go to the Lord for prayer in this matter. Lord, what do we do? We're you know, an eight-hour plane ride from Europe. 16 hours from the U.S. And I'm not saying this to, she's fine today. But Satan wants us to look at the physical. He wants to get our eyes off of Christ. He wants it to distract us. But go to verse 40 here. Of Acts. And this is after Paul and Silas were 
taken out of prison here. And they went out of the prison and entered into the house of Lydia. And when they had seen the brethren, they comforted them and departed. Who did the comforting here? Was it uh, the brethren here? Or was it Paul comforting the brethren? It was God that did the comforting here. And it was only God. When that incident happened, <clears throat> you know, we had our whole church praying for us back home. We could have been flown home in an instant. But again, it's that waiting on God sometimes where he gives, gives you the clear decision. No, we had gotten some, uh, they do have some uh, x-ray machines and stuff there where we, we could look at it. And it just so happened that, that an American doctor was there at the same time. And uh, we got clarification that she was okay. But you don't want to be in a country where God hasn't called you. Because you're going to find out quick if you're not supposed to be there. But waiting on God, he brings the comfort. Now, she's fine today. Um, she, she's walking, talking, everything just fine. And I praise God for that. But there is a cost involved, but God brings the comfort. Through it all, through every trial, if you're going through something today, please take heart. Wait on God. I encourage you, just wait on him. You will not be disappointed. And uh, with that, we'll, uh, if we want to bow our heads and close our eyes. No one looking around as the piano player comes. Have we, have we waited on God properly? Or maybe you just want to thank God for what he has done for you. 